like to call to order the October 13th meeting of the Shelby Township Planning Commission. Madam Secretary, would you call the roll? Mr. Dallow? Here. Mr. Seco? Here. Ms. Casali? Here. Mr. Bernardi? Here. Mr. Wexmanski? Here. Mr. Appone? Here. Mr. Veyer? Here. Chairman Moffat, we have a quorum. Great. I'll let the record also reflect that we're joined by the uh, Township's planner, Mr. Glenn Wynn, and our attorney, Bob Kirk. Um, Madam Secretary, would you, well, actually, next item we have is uh, approval of the agenda. Unless there are any corrections, I'll entertain Here. a motion. So move. Right. Been moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next item is approval of the minutes from the September 22nd meeting. If there are no corrections uh, or additions to the minutes, I'll entertain a motion. No more. Support. Moved by DeSico, support by Dalu. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, this evening we've got two uh, primary items. The first uh, being uh, a, a um, continuation of a site plan that's been uh, already been presented, uh, number 14-25, uh, Simon Morrow, uh, regarding property located on the south side of 25 Mile Road between Van Dyke and Mound. Um, is the petitioner here? Maybe you can re refresh everyone's memory of what you're requesting and maybe give us an update. Hey, as to good evening, everyone. And uh, my name is Simon Morrow with Morrow Engineering. <clears throat> We're presenting a small project that's on the south side of 25 Mile Road, just west of Van Dyke. And it's just east of that uh, existing subdivision. I believe it's called Aurora Park. When we brought this uh, plat into you, uh, the, well, by the way, the property is approximately 165 feet by almost 1,000 feet deep. And uh, we felt that this is probably the most reasonable way to subdivide it into uh, six parcels, two fr facing 25 Mile Road and four coming out of the court that connects up to Aurora Park. Uh, we were we presented this to you at a previous meeting in August and it was recommended to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals because the current zoning doesn't allow for 80 foot wide lots. And the other variance uh, was that the length to width ratio, because these lots are so deep that uh, four to one length to width, it doesn't meet your ordinance. So we needed those two variants. Uh, we did go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. They granted an appeal for those two items. And now we're back in front of you for your uh, approval. Um, I, if you have any questions, the, as far as utilities, all the utilities are there, water, sewer, to be serviced by public utilities. We're planning and extending the court, the sanitary sewer and water main to service those four lots. And the other two from 25 Mile Road, there are ut current utilities there on 25 Mile Road that there will be serviced through there. Uh, as far as storm, we have the Clawson drain right there, and we're also contemplating and using that existing storm sewer system that's connected to and whatever flow we can connect to that. We've been uh, in contact with FazoCon, and so we have a handle on that as well. As far as the lot areas, I mean, that's much larger than your average lots. Those lots are probably twice the amount of R1B, and uh, we're contemplating on having homes comparable to what's there now, if not even larger, because they're nice size lots. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them for anybody. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Wynn, you comments. Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Morrow's summary of what occurred at the previous meeting in the Board of Appeals is accurate. The lots, while they're modestly narrower than the R1B, are substantially larger than the R1B requirements. So um, he's met those, have received that variance. This is really the first step of a two-part process, equivalent to final pl tentative preliminary plat and final preliminary. Um, we approve the design tonight with any adjustments, and then they would proceed with engineering, return back here to make sure all the engineering has been approved and all agency approvals have been granted, and they were receive final approval. There's only a, a, a two or three minor adjustments that are necessary. A tree permit is required. They couldn't, they were not allowed to take trees down until after they have engineering approved. Two street trees are required for each lot. Um, the loss and drain easement should be <coughs> referenced on there. Um, side entry garages are required in R1B, so we'd like to see just a typical garage placement plan. Uh, master deeds required um, with the final submission, and the engineer raised a question about grading and storm water management, which would be handled during the engineering phase. So um, Mr. Morrow's done his homework, received his or other approvals that he needed, so I think um, he's in a position to um, receive approval this evening, Mr. Chairman. Great, thank you. Uh, to the board, any questions of the petitioner? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dalley. For lot number one and lot number two, 
they both entering from 25? How deep are they from the street? And if, are they going to have their own, like, curbside for the entrance to the... Yes, so each one will have a separate entrance from 25 Mile Road. I'm going by memory. I think it's about 287 feet deep. Deep from the deep. street. From, from the right of way of the street. Of so the street. if you count the street, it's another 60 feet. So it's over 300 feet. All right, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Chairman. Fire. I move to approve the preliminary plan for Sunrise Site Condominium Site Plan Number 14-25, subject to the submission of a revised plan addressing all Department comments. Support. Okay, it's been moved by Vire, support by Apone. Any questions of the motion? Hearing none, I'll call the roll. Commissioner Vire. Yes. Commissioner Pone? Yes. Commissioner Rex Monsky. Yes. Commissioner Dalu? Yes. Commissioner DeSico? Yes. Commissioner Casali? Yes. Commissioner Bernardi? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. The chair votes yes. Okay, good luck. Okay, next item is a uh, public hearing slash site plan. It's kind of a, a dual submission. Um, Madam Secretary, why don't you read the uh, public notice as public. Charter Township of Shelby, notice of public hearing. Notice is hereby given that the Planning Commission for the Charter Township of Shelby, Macomb County, Michigan, has received a request for approval of the following amendment to the zoning map <coughs> and approval of a 98-lot single-family development. Applicant, Robert Silveri. Northern Macomb Properties, rezoning request, R1B, single family residential, to R1C, single family resi residential. Location, south side of 25 Mile Road, east of Van Dyke. Sidwell number 23-07-10-101-007 and 23-07-10-126-004. Legal description is as follows. The Planning Commission will meet on Monday, October 13th, 2014 at 7 p.m. in the Shelby Municipal Building, 52700 Van Dyke, Shelby Township, Michigan, 586-726-7243 for the purpose of holding a public hearing on the rezoning application. The application for rezoning, zoning ordinance text, and zoning map may be examined at the Planning and Zoning Department in the Municipal Building Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Written comments may be submitted to the Planning Commission at the above address prior to the hearing. Oral comments will be heard during the public hearing. This notice is provided pursuant to the requirements of Michigan Public Act 110 of 2006 as amended. Shelby Township Planning Commission, Jerome Moffitt Chair, Raquel Moore Secretary. This was published in CNG newspaper on September 24, 2014. There were 74 property owners and nine utilities were notified on September 25th, 2014. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kirk, did the publication meet all legal requirements? Yes, it did. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Ms. Moore, did we receive any correspondence on this request? Uh, just this evening we did from the attorney representing Silver Creek Estates, and it just basically is um, talking about the tree permit. Okay, I tell you, we'll, we'll probably get into that. I think more was there any correspondence okay. from the community? Oh, and, nothing and from, from the, the community. Okay, nope. because there's some unique uh, characteristics to this, I'm going to start by asking Mr. Wynn to kind of give us a little bit of the background. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'll, I'll weigh in with a little bit of history of the site. And Mr. Kirk, if you could weigh in, if I missed something, I'd appreciate it. Um, there's what we have here are two companion applications. One is the rezoning application from R1B to R1C. And the second is the site plan for 96 single family homes. And they're linked. There's a reason we've linked these two together. And both are connected to um, some litigation where we initiated on the site approximately a year ago, maybe more. Uh, we issued a tree permit to do some brushing on this site to allow crews to get in and survey the property and do a tree survey. Um, what happened is all the trees were removed completely. And to um, respond to that, the township initiated a legal action against the applicant. And um, we met with them to determine if there's any opportunity for some settlement of that. And one of the um, suggestions was they could offer some additional plantings that would not would go beyond what we would normally, we wouldn't require as part of a single family subdivision. That's part of the site plan application. And so as, as a way of trying to find uh, 
a compromise, these two applications were submitted. And the site plan, I'm sure Mrs. Surgent, the applicant's representative, will explain those those characteristics. But that's that's why these two have been linked together to provide a site plan that would allow some um, mitigation of the tree removal by the additional plantings they're going to propose. So. I have some comments on those later, Mr. Mr. Chairman, but I'll, I'll wait till later in the meeting to weigh in on those comments specifically. But that's the, Mr. Kirk, does that kind of summarize, I think, where we're at? That's correct. We were in court. It's kind of hanging there, pending there. We were there last week. The advisor the judge did be coming in with a plan before the Planning Commission, so we've adjourned that till December to see if the plan might be acceptable. Uh, being that it's being a rezoning and a site plan, we want to consider this as a conditional rezoning either today or if this gets tabled to the next time, so. Okay, thank you. All right, the format for this evening's public hearing will be as follows. The petitioner or the representative will give a presentation stating the reasons for the rezoning. The commissioners may then ask questions of the petitioner. We'll then open the floor to the public for their comments or questions, and then the petitioner will make concluding remarks. At this time, if the petitioner is here, you could state the reasons for your request. Good evening, my name is Stacy Surgat. I represent FVPM and Silveri and Bob Silveri regarding the Silver Creek condominiums. As Glenn um, has already explained, this has gone through months and months of litigation and we've come up with a resolution that's hopefully acceptable to the township um, in this particular site. The site is about 40 <coughs> acres, uh, 42 acres of developable developable land and the plan that we've proposed today and it's kind of odd because usually in a rezoning you don't talk about a plan so this is a little different um, the plan that we proposed today allows for approximately 17 and a half acres of open space and detention areas so they've they've taken the units and kind of pushed them to one side of the plan and, and the back side of the plan and allowed for a large open space in the center along the disco drain and along the north branch of the middle uh, the Clint, north branch of the Clinton River. Um, they proposed some additional features such as an eight foot wide asphalt bike path through the center of the development. Um, they proposed an additional landscaping buffer which is quite substantial along the south property line and the west property line along with the entrance that's required. The 20 foot landscape easement across the front um, this is a very different site because of what happened in the past and um, the site next to us was most recently zoned R1C and that was called Black Hills Condominiums and so we tried to commingle with that development and that style of, of um, lot, lot averaging. Um, the subdivision can't be developed as zoned because of all of the natural features on site, even with the trees being removed. So that's why we asked for the R1C so that we could do a little bit of lot averaging on that site and leave and preserve as much open space as possible. The zoning to the east is now zoned R1C, to the south is zoned R8, and to the west of this property is zoned C2. So the increased um, buffer that we're proposing along the west side will also enhance that rear to the palazzo. The developer for this specific piece connected to a stub street in the Black Hills condominiums, which is going into the east, and he proposes to do an empty nester style development with mostly single family ranch style homes to try and fill in the gap for a lot of the aging, a lot of the parents who are, kids are going off to college and they're looking to stay in Shelby but want a smaller home and not necessarily a full-blown condo. So that's the try market he's trying to capture in this development. Um, there's storm sewer available uh, on 25 mile, there's water and sewer on 25 mile, and obviously we have two drains running through the property as you can see on the plan. So there's quite a few unique characteristics of this property. And as you know, if we would have followed the proper channels and gone through, the trees would have been allowed to be removed under the site plan guidelines. But since the, they were removed pr prematurely, we did provide for substantial additional landscaping. So we're here to answer any questions that you, if you have them regarding the site plan. 
Okay, thank you. Um, how about let's start back on, on the rezoning. Okay. You said it can't be rezoned as R1B. Why is that? The R1B zoning on this particular property has, there's about 25, 30 acres of, of non-buildable land because of the natural features. So that 17 acres you were bragging about right. is really just property you can't build on. Well, you, I mean, you could. You could fill in the drain and, and close it and build on it, but then you would lose the natural features. But you could do that and, and build our one day then, or one You could, but we yielded the same amount of lots. We were, we're not asking for any additional lots. If I, if I took the property and put um, storm sewer in and closed the drains, I would get the exact same amount of lots. I'm not asking for anything more than I would have gotten that existing way and done a conventional sub. Other questions? Right there. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waxmansky. Yeah, in the comments section, it says bike path extends onto private unit spaces without an easement. Is that, you're planning to get an easement for those or? We'll provide an easement along the bike path within the development. It doesn't extend off site. That's all. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in that in that bike and walking path. Is that um, well? First of all, are there uh, sidewalks in the sub, or is that there's sidewalks throughout the development? Yes, and then additionally along the, the drain along the center of the property, we proposed an eight foot wide bike path. Is it just in that one area that's labeled, or does it go around the whole? If I can walk over to this plan, I would here take this with you then. <clears throat> The walking path is proposed from just shy of the bridge all the way down to the bottom of the development and all the way back around. Oh. And it does interconnect with the existing sidewalks proposed in the sub. So not only will you have the walking path all the way around the sub, there's an additional walking path which will shine on, on the, the, the detention and the, the drain easement. So is that walking path that you said goes around the whole area of the subdivision, and that is separate from the sidewalk? Separate from the sidewalk. Oh, that's nice. It's an additional feature. So it's um, between the curb and designated area at the curb? It's actually behind the lots. Oh. So it's behind the rear of the lots from lots 7 to 13, yeah. 36 to 43, and then from 28 to 35 and 14. And that'll additionally look on this big open space. We haven't gone for DEQ permit, but we would additionally try to get some walking paths into the open space, but that has to go for DEQ approval first. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Chairman, I, I got one about, uh, a question about the process. Uh, we're looking at a... Uh, situation here where the engineer has 33 items and I, I want to ask Mr. Wynn why we can't eliminate a step out of this by going back to the petitioner and getting these cleared up before they come to the Planning Commission. Well, we can do that. We're, we're going to have to do that, I think, Mr. Vire, but I wanted to make sure we, we the whole thing was presented in, in the same context. But we keep getting these proposals, and you keep making recommendations to postpone them, and it's just wasting a lot of time, it appears to me. It, have you an answer to that? Well, yeah, we, it, normally we would do a preliminary review on these before they come in, um, but I think we wanted to make to see if there was, because there was some litigation, if there was any, if this was even a path that anybody wanted to go through. But I mean, frankly, the applicant bears some of the responsibility for the incompleteness too. Um, but you, do you see my point? I understand it, it's a valid one. Um, Mr. Now, when you, we get the letter from the attorney representing the petitioner, I presume, about the trees, this situation happens time and time again, does it not? Where people come in and cut down more trees than they're supposed to. It happens. <laughs> it certainly does. Uh, so could we maybe look at a process that would 
uh, eliminate this, certainly with this many items, 33 items, and then there's four items that uh, could be addressed in engineering. And here we've met on a couple of items tonight, and the biggest one is this one, and it, it will just be delayed again. Uh, would you look at a process which would maybe... Uh, I don't have any problem with a, an applicant coming in here with maybe six or eight uh, items on a, uh, a plan, but when you're looking at 33, it appears to me that that could be somewhat cleared up before it comes to this body. We can do that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fire. I think part of this was because of the litigation. We got to the point where we let's get this out there. Let's see if it's something that the, you know the township would look favorably upon. So that's why you didn't drag this out. The court has a timetable also. So just a thought. Good thought. Good thing. But, you know, I mean, it's somewhat in defense to Mr. Wynn. If someone submits something, even if it's as entirely incomplete as, as some of them have been, you know. Does he have a responsibility to, to move forward with it? Mr. Or do we give him the discretion, uh, you know? Well, you know, can I, I think I, there is a process under, that we have. Normally, we do a preliminary staff review first to, to vet these issues and to narrow the scope of them down. Um, in this case, we didn't do that because it was attached to a rezoning and there was some urgency based on the court time frame. Um, normally, when you get site plans like you did for Mr. Morrow's, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty minor. We had so many public hearings that we were trying to schedule back in the summer that we tried to get these on a regular schedule. But I think Mr. Vargas' point's well taken. And we do that by not dispensing with the preliminary review, making them go through that process, narrow down the list of problems, and then get them back to you. So I, you know, I think in our eagerness to get some of these things before you, we may have dispensed with that. The only time we typically do that is when we have, I think, uh, projects that are relatively simple and routine, like some of the industrial on Shelby Parkway. Those are pretty simple, and there was some urgency with those in time frame. Um, we, will, we will kind of reinstitute that other process and make sure we vet these a little more carefully. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is the only public hearing the Planning Commission will hold on this rezoning request. Your remarks will be entered into the record for Township Board evaluation. The Planning Commission is a recommending body. The Township Board will take into consideration these comments when making the final decisions on the rezoning. Anyone in the audience or group spokesman is now welcome to speak in support of the project or against or even just ask any questions. Um, at this point, I open it up to the public if you want to come up. And I would you need your name and address for the record and for you to sign in, please. My name is Bill Beakey from 54273 Folklore. It's the south side of with this development. And um, our interest is just to see what kind of, what, how the layout is and how it, when it abuts to our property. And we're hoping that there is a, like some kind of a buffer to, uh, for the transition. And okay. I couldn't tell from back there looking at the, at the uh, chart exactly where where our house was, and I'd be interested to know that. Mr. Okay. Chairman, uh, could Mr. I Wynn. suggest that Ms. Surgit put the landscape plan up and show that because, sure. um, you know, yeah, she you, mentioned she mentioned yeah. a buffer on the south. Maybe and what was detail. what's and this is this is what this all comes down to, other than the submission deficiencies, which are substantial. What they're proposing is a green belt along the entire south property line and a portion of the western property line. And it usually the green belt requirements established by another use, if it's multiple family or commercial, industrial, back camp to residential, they have the obligation. In this case, what this applicant is doing is that in lieu of all the trees are removed, we're going to replant it, and that would be our our um, way of rectifying or remediating. That, would that be the sole way, or are they going to also put plant trees within the development? With just the normal street trees, but the, the street trees. But okay. the, the primary substitute for what was removed is along that south property line. Okay. Now, normally you wouldn't have that in a single family subdivision. Yeah. Yeah. Could, Mr. could you show where Fork Lower comes in? Yeah, why don't you show yeah. them? And then if you could maybe explain a little bit more of the, the depth of the, the, the belt, green belt, and what's, what the, the proposed planning is. So if you want to go over there, she can show me over here. Sure. The oh. folklore comes in right over here. It kind of comes off the page. Um, it comes in right off of right off of this end of the of the proposed landscape easement. So here's the drain that comes through the property. What's the street that comes in? Off of that? It's probably mm -hmm. best to show you this. 
So this is where folklore comes in, right here. And the landscape easement goes across the entire perimeter. Is, is Ansbury shown on there anywhere, uh, Stacy? Ansbury's right here. This, this development, this is the last apartment of Ansbury right here, just west of the drain. Okay. And then there's a vacant parcel between Ansbury and the residential on Folklore. So if so, this is your home probably right here? Oh, okay. That's, uh, or yeah. I don't know which side of the street well, you're on. on. this side. Okay. So this is the first home right here on Folklore. Two residential lots. Okay. So they would, their driveways would be on our street? Those two driveways are proposed on Folklore. And no connection into the subdivision. They're single family. They're detached condominiums, yes. The idea was to repopulate that area with mature trees. Okay. And there's a, um, I looked at all the, there's a fairly interesting variety. You have deciduous trees, you have some evergreens, and you have some lower level like flowering shrubs and what's what's the how how wide is the, the green belt i think it's 20 feet 25 feet forgive me it's 25 feet and you believe that's sufficient mr Wynn? i think in this case it is for single family i mean the question is is it sufficient to make up for what was removed that becomes the issue okay i think it's a reasonable response Any other questions? Yeah, I need you up the mic. Thanks. I don't know that I have any direct questions, but I just don't know as trying to settle in having condominiums right next to myself and our neighbors who have. I mean, they're condominium in name, really. They're, it's yeah. Really, it's really it's a, it's, a, it's a house. It's a single family home. Yeah. And, and I, these are with the tech one story ranches. What if any uh, ballpark is to a big. Yeah, I would imagine. Well, that's about what our house is. 2000, uh, yeah. 22, 24, somewhere in there. Chairman, you don't you won't know. I mean, it, it's a single family, detached single family community with public roads. The only difference being how the property is conveyed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, for all practical purposes, this is just a single family development. It saves them a year in the yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. From from a platted sub. I mean, there are some single family kind of memes that are on smaller sites, and and there are some issues with some of the sites here which we'll get into, but this is like a normal, conventional single-family development just using a different approval process. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good. Thank you. And we have extra copies of the plan. If they'd like one later, I'd be happy to share it with them. Another question? No, we're all set? Okay. I can explain that. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, hey, why don't we close public hearing? Yeah, and then we'll, get, we'll answer that have, question. He's going to go. What's that? Plan to. Yeah. Um, actually, this would be a good time, Mr. Wynn, once you get Yeah, let me on, offer on, my on comments. On the plan, yeah. Um, as, as Mr. Vire indicated, there are a substantial number of comments from our engineer. I have a substantial number of comments as well, and I, I, I don't want to go through all these one by one. I'd like to just kind of, at least for mine, um, indicate just some uh, some general observations. The first one about the rezoning, I don't have any strong objection to the change in zoning from R1B to R1C. Um, the over, uh, this area's planned for single family development. It's a question of what's the appropriate density and their actual rec density range with the open space is, um, I think 2.3 units per acre, which is well within the range of the, what the master plans are recommending for that area. Um, the, the concern is um, the lot sizes, and that addresses the, the questions that are being raised. In the R1B zoning, the minimum lot is 14,400 square feet with 90 feet of frontage. In the R1C, which is what they're requesting, it's 12,000 square feet and 80 feet wide. Now the or, so that's the minimums. Now the ordinance does allow for some like 10% reduction of those um, with township board approval, which would allow the applicant to go down to 72 feet and 10,800 square feet. So they've they've 
there's a, a table showing the lot sizes on the plan. A total of 29 lots have lot areas ranging from that are under that. They're 99, 9750 to 9917, and that's a reduction of 22 percent. There's nothing in the ordinance that gives us the opportunity to to reduce them that much further. So there's going to be have to be a corresponding adjustment on their behalf of making the lots a little bigger to kind of get back to where they need to be. The PUD process allows for some ad additional reduction, but we're not in that process right now. So um, some of the other items that are missing, uh, again, a development impact statement traffic study. We required it from Mr. Icabelli's site to the east. We, we certainly need it here. Any DEQ approvals and permits. And I think a larger size map that shows how this kind of relates to the rest of the development would be a little bit helpful as well. Um, I, I, uh, again, I, I, there's a lot to work on here. Um, I don't think we're in any position to move this forward to the next step in the process other than share our comments with the applicant and have them get back to the drawing boards and make <coughs> some adjustments. Okay, thank you. Uh, to the petitioner, any concluding remarks? Have you had a chance to take a look at the engineering's comments for the planners? Nothing. You haven't seen them yet? No. Okay. Okay. All right. So I can't comment because I haven't seen them. That is fair. Thank you. Just here to answer any questions, okay. any further well, questions if you have any. Are there any, any additional questions? Being none. Okay, thank you. Thank I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, this evening, our decision uh, on this rezoning must be based on the following. The practicality of this rezoning request and the effect on the surrounding area. The owner's right to use his land. Uh, do current growth and development patterns warrant this rezoning? And is the proposed rezoning in accordance with the master plan? Um, we may, the commission may recommend approval, may disapprove this request or table it uh, to evaluate it further. At this point, unless there are additional questions, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Moore. I move to postpone further consideration of rezoning application number 09-14 for and site application 14-32 until a revised plan addressing all the department comments is submitted. Okay, been moved by more support by DeSico. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, I'll call the roll. Commissioner Moore. Yes. Commissioner DeSico. Yes. Commissioner Dalu. Yes. Commissioner Casale. Yes. Commissioner Bernardi. Yes. Commissioner Rexmansky. Yes. Commissioner Pone. Yes. Commissioner Vire. Yes. And the chair votes yes. Um, next item is planning director's report. Chairman, two, um, two items. We have our administrative report for the month, um, the number of sign applications that we approved, uh, I think which is 22 this month, or 20 applications, two temporary uses. And from a scheduling standpoint, we're not going to have a meeting on the 27th. Pretty much caught up to where we needed to be. Um, the other, we have some public hearings on the 10th of November, but we will have a, a little bit of a break here. Very good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anything for the good, good in the order, good and welfare? Hearing, seeing none. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Support. Move and support it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I'll give it to you.